Hi, and we're here for another SPSS tutorial. This tutorial is going to focus on chi-square test of independence. So a chi-square test of independence is used to determine whether two categorical variables are independent of each other or if they're related. So the null hypothesis in a chi-square test of independence is that the variables are independent for, from one another, meaning regardless of what group somebody happens to be in in, in one variable, that doesn't change the probability of them being in any of the groups of the other variables. So those, those variables can be said to be independent, okay? So the way we're gonna explore this in SPSS is with a simple data set that has two variables. Both variables are nominal. They, they're, they're both categorical variables. Uh, the variables are called album and concert. The album variable tells us whether or not a specific individual owns the album of a band and the concert variable tells us whether or not they attended the most recent concert for that band. Okay, so what we wanna know is, are these two variables independent from one another or are they related? Does, does owning the album have something to do, does it make it more or less likely that somebody will have attended the concert? Okay, so the way that we're gonna do this analysis in SPSS is we're gonna click on Analyze, go to Descriptive Statistics, and then scroll down to the cross tabs menu. This is where we're gonna find our chi-square analysis. And so cross tabs will do a lot of different things. Chi-square analysis is just one of them. So in general, we just need to define what variable is gonna represent our rows and what variable is gonna represent our columns in the matrix that we would be creating for the chi-square analysis. And it doesn't really matter which of our two variables go in the row and which goes in the column. We just have to pick one uh, one for the row and one for the column. So we'll, we'll put the album variable in the row box and we'll put the column variable, uh, sorry, the concert variable in the column box. All right, so now we've got one variable in each and the next thing we need to do is click on the statistics tab and we've got to tell SPSS that we want the chi-square statistic. So there's a lot of different statistics we could ask for here. We're, we're particularly interested in chi-square click continue and then one other thing that I like to do if we click on the cells box um, SPSS is going to automatically it defaults to giving us the observed counts for each of the combinations of categories of our two variables I also like to get the expected amounts as well so we can see how different the observed amounts are from the expected amounts should we get a significant chi-square value all right, other things that sometimes people look at uh, are the row, column, and total percentages. To me, that kind of crowds the, the output that we're gonna eventually get, but if you're interested, it sometimes that's easier, that, that's good information to get if you wanna use that to compute an odds ratio, let's say. That could be really good information to have. Okay, so let's click Continue, click OK. And so our, we get a couple of pieces of output. The first box just says case processing summary. It tells us what we're investigating. Did the person own the album and did the person attend the concert? Those represent our two variables. It tells us that there were 250 total cases uh, in our data set and all of them had data for both of these variables. That's what the, the sample size in the valid column means and the 100% being valid uh, indicates that we had no missing data anywhere. The second box is our, it's our matrix of observed and expected data, right? So first of all, over here on the left, it says, does the person own the album? So this, is, this represents our album variable. And we have two categories, does not own the album or owns the album, right? So these two rows represent those two categories of the album variable and then we get the observed counts and the expected counts within each of these rows so the count for the people that own the out that, that do not own the album the count the expected count for the people that do not own the album the observed count for the people that do own the album and the expected count for people that do own the album All right and so we also have our we have our second variable represented by the columns did the person attend the concert uh, the first column is that they didn't attend the concert. The second column is that they did. And so each of these boxes down here represents a combination of groups on these two variables. 
So the first box would be the people that did not attend the concert and do not own the album. So we've got our observed and our expected counts for both. Um, also, all the people that attended the concert but don't own the album. So we've got observed and expected counts for both. And so we've got that for all four of our possible combinations of the two variables. Also, we have totals. So uh, over here in the very right column, these totals represent everybody that does not own an album. So 71 people did not own an album. 179 people do own the album. And then we also have totals uh, across the bottom for the concert variable. So 132 people did not attend the concert, 118 people did attend the concert, and 250 people total attended the concert. Or sorry, 250 people total were in the data set across all of these variables. Okay, so that just gives us our observed, our expecteds, and our totals counts for, for both of these variables, kind of any way you want to look at them. And then what we can do is we can go down here to the chi-square test box, and really, we only care about this first row of the box, the one that says Pearson chi-square. So the value is the observed chi-square value, so 16.62. Uh, that's our observed chi-square. The degrees of freedom is the degrees of freedom for the test. So that's the number of rows minus 1 times the number of columns minus 1. So 2 minus 1 times 2 minus 1 is 1. So that's our degrees of freedom. And then our significance value, our p-value. And so a p-value in SPSS of 0 0.000 means that the p-value is less than 0 0.001. That would indicate a significant test. And that means we would reject the null hypothesis that these variables are independent. And we would conclude that these variables are related to one another. All right? And so if we look back up at our second box here with our observed and expected counts, what we can see is that more people did not own the album and didn't attend the concert than was expected. More people owned the album and attended the concert than was expected. And then fewer people owned the album but did not attend the concert than were, were expected. And fewer people did not own the album but attended the concert, right? So essentially, if we look at the big picture here, what this is saying is these two variables are related. And what it looks like is that if somebody owned the album, it was way more likely that they attended the concert um, than if they didn't own the album, right? More than we would expect if the variables were unrelated, right? Or we could say uh, if they attended the concert, it was more likely that they owned the album, right? But those two, those two categories seem to go together. Owning the album and attending the concert were, seem to be related. Right? And then people were less likely to own the album if they didn't attend the concert and vice versa. All right? So overall, really simple test. Um, we just have two variables, each have two levels. We ran the test, the test based on the chi-square um, test in the very first row down here. The test came out significant, the variables are related. And if we look at the observed and expected values in the table, in the second table of the output, that tells us what happened more than we would have expected and where that relationship of the variables is. Okay, um, hopefully that was clear. Uh, this is the only thing that we're going to do with chi-square tests. Um, chi-square goodness of fit tests are, are much easier just to do by hand. There's not a real straightforward way to do that in SPSS, so we're not going to worry about it here. All right, thanks for checking out the tutorial, and we'll see you in class.